I'm uh, I'm here at Prejmer, at the fortified church that uh, we have to visit in a couple of minutes, most exactly five. I will show you a little bit. The things are looks like this. It's one of the largest in Transylvania and the most complete in here. <clears throat> and then after after the tour, I will go uh, to Gimbav to see the medieval knights demonstration of fights with the sword. Uh, it's pretty hot in here today, probably like anywhere else in Europe, like 32 Celsius degrees. But it's good because uh, it's an excellent weather for, uh, for the tour. And I will wait for the other people to come. Hi, Paul. Hi, Marta. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Angela. How is the weather in UK? Hi, Ashley. Welcome. Okay. Hi, Janice. <laughs> Are not many visitors inside at this time, at this hour, so I presume we'll have a good tour together without so many people. Hi, Adriana. Here I'm near the city hall of Prejmer near Brasov. Hello, Adriana. Hello, Glenn. You will see that the church inside it looks very interesting. <coughs> yes, Janice, thank you. It's a beautiful place. You will see when I will enter inside. It's like a hive. <laughs> inside is like a hive. With honey comes, but not of the bees, but of the people. Welcome, Dawn. So two minutes and a half. Till I will start the tour. It's a wonderful weather here after about one week of rain, like seven days of rain every day and small storms. Now we enjoy the weather. And I say that because uh, here in the area where uh, I live, here in Brasov, we used to say that the summer went into a Thursday because it's pretty cold. <laughs> it's pretty cold here. Usually, so that's why we used to say that the summer was in a Thursday. Only, <laughs> only one day. Even that the winters are not anymore like it used to be. I mean, usually the winter in here, it was with minus 15 degrees. For short period of times, 20, minus 20, minus 25, but uh, since with this climate change, not the winter, it's as it used to be. Good morning, Jean. It's true, good morning. 
it's very nice with this <laughs> the air that's cold but it's not uh, done it's only for four or five days usually in january uh this uh this cold temperature with minus 20 but in the rest minus 10 minus 15 it used to be normal temperature now with the climate change it goes to minus five even to zero which is not the winter i used to i used to have okay so we start the tour uh it's a fortified church as i told you it's a um, it's a construction which is typical for this uh, side of uh, of europe and uh, you will find it mostly in here these kind of fortifications because it uh, they were a creation of the germans which were colonized in here you can see the thickness of the walls and uh, i will go inside of the wall of the fortress i will go inside of the wall of the fortress it's a it's a defense corridor i i used to call it uh, the people which uh, are here today as far as i can see many of you were listening my stories uh, into the other tours but uh, for the ones which are here for the first time i have to do a short briefing of the romanian history and a short briefing it means that uh, the germans arrived here in transylvania starting with the 13th century after the hungarian conquest of this uh, Romanian territory. The Hungarian kingdom conquered it uh, after 100 years of fight against the Romanians, somewhere at the end of the 13th century, around 1290. And because the Romanians, uh, of course, refused to work with them, to cooperate with them, and because of the fact that the Romanians uh, were mostly agricultures and shepherds, and uh, the Hungarian kingdom need some artisans and merchandisers to arise, you know, to to grow a little bit the commerce and the, and the manufacturing here. They invited in Transylvania uh, German colonists from the left side of the river Rhine uh, just to work in here and uh, to develop this part of the... Uh, hello from Austria, hello Rhonda, to develop this, uh, this part of the economy. So uh, when they arrived here into a land uh, pretty hostile because on the other side of the Carpathians uh were standing the it was Valachia or to the south of the Carpathians uh, the other Romanian territory as today but uh, not very well defended against the Ottomans and the Tartars which used to come and invade all the time cross the Carpathians uh, here in Transylvania to rob and to kill so that's why it was uh, compulsory for the for those colonists to build something uh to defend inside of it so because it was very expensive and difficult to build a church and a fortress they invented this fortified church which is two in one so actually a church inside surrounded by walls in the majority of the cases uh, those walls had inside of it um, houses rooms actually rooms one room for each family from uh, living into the village into the community to hide and to accommodate inside of it uh, during of the sieges of the attack of the enemies inside they used to keep uh, everything they need for resistance like uh, food uh, weapons they brought the cattle inside they had even a, a well inside this fortress was started to be built uh, by the teutonic knights which uh, were colonized in here by the same hungarian kingdom between 1211 and 1225 and they are the one which uh, built for the first time the church that you can see its tower inside of the fortification and uh, later was developed uh, little by little uh, till arrive in this uh, in this form that you can see it now around the, of the 17th century we'll cross uh, inside of the wall through that side where you can see the where you can see the the windows inside of uh, oops it's again upside down <laughs> just a moment to see what should i do probably i will do this as uh, it was happened the same thing when i went to brun and now i'll enter inside of the i will enter inside of the fortress through the gate it's a very well fortified gate built into 
into the Baroque style, as you can see. And uh, the ditch, which used to be a round of this fortress, you can see it here, this green space. It was the ditch, which was filled up with water, it was uh, covered up in the 19th century, around 1800. The other building, it's the city hall. Okay. And I will enter. I will enter in here. And uh, here we are in the court of the former city hall of the fortress. You can see that there are a lot of doors into the walls. Those doors belong to the, are those rooms, which I told you it was uh, designed for the accommodation of the families from the village during of the sieges. Here it's a very good place defended by walls with shooting windows to defend against the enemy if the enemy would broke would break this uh, this first bridge. And here it was another trap designed for the enemy, a barbicane, as it used to be called. A fortification presented, which exists to all the fort to all the fortresses and citadels into the medieval times. It's a very narrow place, which actually forced the enemy to stay together. And uh, through the windows, which used to be created into the walls, the defenders shoot to kill the enemy. And that gate, when it falls down, was split the invaders in two which was make uh, much easier for the defenders to, to, push, to push back the attack. Here are the fortified uh, churches from Transylvania, part of the UNESCO heritage. Uh, we are right now, in this moment, here to Prezmer. And uh, here we have the largest one, which is the one from uh, Biertan. You can see it with three lines of walls. It was a, a residence of a bishop for a long period of time. I will go here to visit it, uh, probably somewhere in uh, in September. And here it's Kölnik. It's a, a residence of one of the leaders of the Germans from Transylvania. And it's a very good fortification, uh, which I will visit uh, as well this uh, September or October. It's very important because it shows you how was starting to be built the castles. So actually the castle was starting uh, to be built with a home tower, which is this one here in center. At the last, um, at the last floor was standing the guards. Here was, uh, was living the, the feudal senior, the noble. And then here was the church, a surrounding wall, two towers, which were developed uh, little by little into a bigger castle and the fortress as we know it today. So that first fortification was actually uh, the first, uh, the beginning of all the castles from today and all of the architecture of the castles. Here, as you can see, this iron gate uh, have a part, have a broken part. And there's a legend which says that uh, it was broken uh, because it was felt into the head of an uh, invader Turk. <laughs> and was broke in that uh, in that strong head of the Turk, of course, killing uh, killing him uh, in the same time. It's uh, it's the Iron Gate, which is uh, original, have about 400 500 years ago, and it's uh, it's here uh, for us. Now I will go inside of the church, which was built by the Teutonic Knights into the 13th century. And I will tell you many other things about the organization of the Germans here in Transylvania. I told you that this fortress, this fortified church, it's a hive. You can see, I said the hive because of the houses, which are actually built in here, rooms, not houses. Those doors representing a room for each family from the village to come here in case of, uh, in case of siege to defend themselves. You can see it's a very, it's a very big place. 
and very beautiful in the same time, especially in the summer time. Now I will enter into the church. The church is Protestant. Uh, because in 1530, the reform of this man, Martin Luther, arrived in Transylvania and changed the religion of the Germans and of the, thank you, Karen, and of the Hungarians from Catholic to Protestant. It's a Gothic church that you can see it was built uh, into the 13th century. You can say that uh, looking at the material used for the construction, which is river stone, as I used to call it, and here, I will approach a little bit. We have, uh, we have in here the shrine, the altar. As you can see, it's a Gothic one. It's built around uh, 14th century. It's the oldest Gothic shrine in uh, Romania. And uh, you can say that very well, uh, not only by dating it with carbon C14, but also after the clothes, after the clothing of the characters from the crucifixion scene, which are typical for the uh, clothes, for the clothing of the Germans, which were living in Transylvania in those times. So it's, uh, and of course this shrine had a characteristic, being painted it uh, on the back side in the same time. Unfortunately, I can't pass, uh, as you can see, to see it. In here, you can see the numbers, you know, are the songs from the book, from the religious book, which is, uh, which are used to indicate to the public uh, which song to sing during the, the religious service. And also, um, I will tell you that these religious services are pretty rare in here, because as I told you with other occasions, the, the community, the German community from here was, uh, going back to Germany after the revolution from 1989, just to be sure that uh, they are escaping from the action race <laughs> of the Soviet Union. As you can see, the Gothic used here, it's a Cistercian Gothic. Actually, it's the Gothic which uh, is to be found everywhere in Romania, everywhere in Transylvania, because the Cistercians was an um, uh, order of knights from France, which arrived here into the 14th century uh, to uh, actually to speak about the Roman Catholic religion, even that the Romanians were and still are Orthodox in majority, Greek Orthodox. And uh, they was coming here to talk about this and they built a monastery to Kurza, a Cistercian monastery where I will be uh, on September 3rd to, tell, to, to talk to you from there and to do a live. And uh, this Gothic of the Cistercians, as you can see, it's a very simple Gothic. Uh, it's not very um, flamboyant, no? Uh, like it's the one from Belgium, for example. And it's very simple uh, because the way, the way of life of the Cistercians, it's a, it, it was a very simple way of life. They was um, actually, uh, their motto, it was an, in Latin, ora et labora, which it means pray and work. Here uh, I can show you a couple of uh, tombstones which was found inside of this church, the tombstones uh, of one of the most important personalities of the, um, of the community. Only, there, only them uh, were buried uh, inside of the church. It's a peacock. And that's also I want to tell you a couple of things about the way as the Germans were organized. As I told you before, they were organized in, um, in neighborhoods where uh, they used to live together. And um, they had um, a leader of this neighborhood where they used to live. And that leader was organized uh, the whole community uh, for, the, uh, for the works to the field to plant the seeds, to harvest the crops, everything else. And even into the church, they were uh, settled uh, in a very good way. For example, to the lateral side, like here, to the southern side, it was staying the boys, starting with the confirmation year, 12 years old, they were confirmed to the uh, church, to the community. Here to this side, we have the girls, and uh, they were staying there on the lateral sides, 
till the age of marriage, which was usually 16, 17 years old, when they were moved uh, to the left side of these uh, sides of benches, here were moving the men, to the other side were moving the ladies, the married ladies, and they were advancing into the benches uh, together with their age. So all the time we'll had uh, in the first benches the oldest members of the community. As you can see, the ceiling, it's uh, carved with brick. So those are bricks, that, um, that beautiful work from the ceiling. It's a, no, no, it, no problem. Sarumana. It's a characteristic of the, of the Cistercian Gothic and of, of the Gothic in general. And organ, as you can see, it is built uh, somewhere. Yes, it's original. Everything in this church is original. Done. And the organ is built into the 19th century, around uh, 1800. It's a, it's a beautiful organ. It's a pure Baroque style, I can say. <laughs> Have all the elements of the Baroque. Yes, Angela, the organ is very beautiful, but I will invite you to, to join me probably in September when I will be able, I hope I will be able to enter into the black church where the organ have about 4,000 tubes. It's the biggest uh, Buchholz mechanical organ made by Buchholz at Vienna, and it's uh, something unbelievable. And as well, if you want to see a, a beautiful organ, like 6,000 tubes, is the largest in Romania. Uh, follow me on... Uh, on Let's Baroque tour, which I scheduled it for uh, September at Sibiu, where the cathedral, uh, where the evangelical cathedral, it's absolutely great there. So uh, I will let the church behind, and I will invite you to follow me inside of the fortress, inside of the world. Yes, it's. Uh, I think it's September 10th that Let's Baroque tour <coughs> at Sibiu. And here, because they were forced to stay for a long period of time during of the sieges in here, also they need the children uh, have to continue the school. So that's why they have they organized in here in one of the rooms a small classroom, which you can see it right now. The benches are exactly the ones from 150 to 100 years old. Uh, the same type of benches uh, we used to have in, uh, we used to have in Romania in 1970s, in 1980s, in some of the schools. Here it's a beautiful fresco, also from uh, 1700, which was kept and rediscovered uh, from under the plaster. Yeah, it's 10th, Angela, it's 10th. It's September 10th. It's the first weekend after September 3rd. And you can see also the same type of, um, of paintings. You're welcome. It's the same type of paintings like you saw it on the Bran Castle tour, on the Dracula's Castle tour. The same uh, motives of the Germans from uh, here from Transylvania. It's a bee which uh, bothering me. <laughs> And here I will continue the tour on this gallery, climbing staircases. I'm very curious to see how it will be the signal inside of the wall. So here we are going to the defense corridor. But before of this moment, here is the interior of uh, a German room. I will remember you that this room, it was the one where the people used to live during of the sieges, starting with the, uh, with the 15th century, so 1400. The people used to live in this room. Imagine that a family had minimum seven members, which it means father, mother, and at least five children. So seven members, if we add to those seven members, uh, the grandparents, or at least a pair of grandparents, will go very easy to nine, ten persons. Exactly, not much room. So they have to live in here with the cutters, which were staying into the courtyard. 
and uh, trying to resist to the sieges of their enemies. That's why in many situations, as I told you in my first uh, tour in Gimbav, the town where I live, which uh, had another fortified church, sometimes they used to trick the the enemy throwing from the walls the rest remains of the the last remains of food and drink, telling them take it, all of them. We have plenty, just to make the enemy believe that they still have a lot of provisions, and make the enemy leave, <laughs> uh, considering the the siege useless. And here it's a here it's a loom. Here it's a loom. Uh, we still have this kind of objects in uh, in Transylvania and in Romania. Uh, which are still uh, working very well. The people are uh, still doing it, uh, working with uh, with those looms to do clothes from hemp. Usually, they do not smoke the hemp; they <laughs> they're using it for other uh, purposes. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really it's really beautiful. They do carpets, they do rugs, they do trousers, they do blouses, they do a lot of stuff on this uh, on this loom. When I will be in the north of Romania in Maramureș, maybe this fall, maybe next summer, uh, Maramureș it's a it's a living museum. It's an it's an open air museum, Maramureș, because our uh, wooden houses everywhere, wooden churches, the people preserve the way uh, the the old way of life. So it's uh, it's something really really beautiful, and uh, it deserves to book a tour in Romania to come and see it, or to follow me here to see it. And this is uh, a small uh, a small artisan uh, uh, place for uh, a, a, a man which guys in uh, in wood. As you can see, all the tools are here, and from here we'll enter inside of the wall. So that exterior white wall that you saw it from outside. Now I will enter inside of it. Not before to take another look of the entire courtyard from here. Let's see. We are on a pretty high level here. And now in front of me, here it's another big room with an, with an exhibition about the 45 churches from Transylvania was one of the inner towers. And here it's, um, is the entrance inside of the wall. Here is the entrance inside of the wall. So it's a long corridor with openings. I'm glad, Karen. Uh, here you can see the openings which, which they are was using it to throw hot water and stones into the heads of the enemies. This is another opening for shooting. As you can see, the angle it's very large inside, just to be able to move like this to shoot in pretty much all over directions. And it's very small and narrow here, just to be very difficult for the enemy to shoot you. Okay. And now we'll do a tour of 360 degrees of this uh, of this defense corridor. And the first thing I will show you is that that organ called like this because it was spreading death, not music, and because it was looking like an organ. Here we are into the attic above of the main entrance which i used to enter inside of the uh, inside of the church okay and now i will continue descending on this uh, on the other staircase imagine that the people were forced to live in here even for a week uh, fighting against the enemies but they had a very efficient weapon here. You can see another shooting windows, another throwing one, another throwing, another shooting. 
So we're disposed uh, very close one to the other to be able to cover a large uh, part of the, of the land in front of the fortress with fire. So this is the dead organ, called like this because on this, uh, on this wooden piece, as you can see, were displayed five tubes on that small holes. Five tubes loaded with small uh, iron balls, which was shooting once, like a semi-machine gun, boom, 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 boom. Then they were turning over, and here on this side were another five pipes, five guns loaded, which the same boom, boom, boom. In the meantime, the other ones were loaded. They were turning down, and they were shooting the enemy again. So in this way, the defenders had a demi automatic fire like a like a fire uh, <laughs> like a fire gun and uh, they were very efficient against the enemy imagine the surprise of the enemies of the turf of the tartars at five uh, at 1500 seeing that somebody is shooting in them with something which which repeat the fire very often it was amazing and produced a lot of panic uh, among the enemies making them go away and, uh, and um, renouncing to attack the fortress uh, on this side. And uh, here, to the left side, they had uh, another rooms where they used to keep the, the provisions for the people which uh, were shooting uh, into the enemy. It's an entire story uh, about this, uh, this kind of fortifications, which were settled, as I told you, by the Germans, uh, pushed back, uh, pushed from the back, by the necessity of defend themselves against the against of the invaders. I don't I don't talk only about the only about the, the the Ottomans or about the Tatars, but also inside enemies, different types of princes or uh, I don't know nobles, which wants to became the owners of this beautiful land, which is Transylvania. Here, it's a tower because as you can see this beam thick beam of wood it was actually sustaining the floor of the next floor here it's I, i'm on the I, i'm on the first floor and above me it, it used to be the second floor of the tower also you can see those holes for shooting they can place a, a small cannon there so here was the this beam it was the pavement for the floor of the next uh, of the next floor and why like this i will show you i hope to be able to see this way and to not fall here if you can take a look you can see outside and uh, be that because this tower is outside of the walls so they can shoot along the walls to not let the enemy to climb it and to invade the fortress so that's why those towers were so important because even those holes that you can see it up there, it was uh, designed to shoot along the walls. Yes, it's smart. They were, in those times, very smart, Karen, and they imaginating, inventing a lot of amazing things. So uh, the life of the people uh, into a village like this consists mostly in working and in a very strict order, a German order, which uh, became famous all over the world. The truth is that without order, those people couldn't survive in here because uh, being attacked all the time, being into a hostile territory at the beginning, without order rules and regulations, it was mostly impossible to live in here. And because of the fact that they were thinking a lot still to take a decision, because of the fact that um, they were very organized in going to, uh, to work and to apply the, the punishment to the members of the society, of course, that living with the Romanians, even that the Romanians lost all their economical, political, and social rights in Transylvania. The Romanians were actually uh, tolerated in their own country. 
for about 800 years in here. But uh, thank you, Moy. But uh, they were uh, they were influenced by the Germans uh, in their way of uh, thinking. So because of this, uh, the Romanians are even today called the Romanians from Transylvania are called uh, the Germans of Romania, and of course are a lot of jokes <laughs> about us that we are very uh, very slow in in thinking uh, and in <laughs> and in moving <laughs> sometimes. Uh, here it's a darker side uh, of the of the route of the tour, but I will arrive uh, very soon. Now, actually, in this moment, we are going around. Yes, of this uh, of this fortification. Here it's another room. You can see the windows, and the room it's very very uh, it's very narrow. Of course, uh, when we talk about the medieval times, we said yes, it's spooky. <laughs> uh, we we speak about uh, a lot of uh, bravery, about of knights, about uh, beautiful uh, constructions, about uh, the beautiful art which uh, was created in those times. Uh, for example, when I went to uh, to Assisi, no, in Italy, uh, San Francisco de Assisi, the famous uh, Christian saint. I was impressed by the by the constructions, by the architecture. Uh, that city for me, it was like an open air museum. Here, any ghost? Of course, uh, it's one like behind me. I just saluted <laughs> a couple of uh, minutes ago. I'm joking, Mike. No, the idea is that uh, we had jokes, uh, ghosts in in Transylvania. Also, a couple of buildings uh, which uh, were uh, uh, researched by some. Uh, uh, by some specialists in this kind of phenomenon, and uh, my travel agency um, organized for them uh, two times. They came here in the last 10 years to do some researches, and the truth is that they found on Dracula's castle uh, into some uh, hotels from Sigishwara, which is the birthplace of Dracula, where I will go uh, in, in August uh, 28th, I think, uh, for a live. So, uh, and in the hotel where I stay usually in Sigishwara, uh, the people which are working into the hotel uh, telling me that many, many times they were herding sounds into the into the basement. They was find uh, things moved into the into the hotel uh, without any reason. And uh, some uh, some some tourists told me that uh, they saw uh, even the the glass of water moving on the table during of the night. So are a lot of uh, things like this. Uh, happening in Romania and in Transylvania, like in any other place in the world. But here, uh, these are the ones that I know it to tell you about. So, uh, coming back to the to the Germans and to the stories about them, uh, I told you that uh, they were very well organized and they built a lot of good stuff in here into the into the fortress. But first, to show it to you, I will enter into another tower which <laughs> seems to be much better displayed yes it's the tower where uh, situated on the side where i start the tour you can see it's very narrow this window and it's outside of the wall you can see that white wall of the fortress and the foundation of another wall which is but it's basic. Okay, and this is the staircase which goes to the first floor of this tower because the towers were built on two, even three floors. Okay, and now I will show you to you. I will tell you that in Assisi everything was very beautiful, a great city with a beautiful. Imagine that they had a problem with the uh, hygiene because uh, they doesn't have uh, toilets inside of the house, mostly outside. They use a bucket to do their needs into the house. And then that bucket was thrown on the window outside into the street. So imagine the smell, the germs and everything else which were populated those beautiful medieval cities. Here at Prejmer, our people made a toilet. 
I present you a toilet. It's a beautiful toilet built into the wall to take to do their needs right in the head <laughs> of the attackers, <laughs> of the invaders. So it's a beautiful toilet here. <laughs> they were very clean, very neat. <laughs> All those people from uh, from Preshmer. And intercalated to these uh, shooting windows and throwing windows, they used to throw not with stones, only with stones, but also with another type of things. This is another toilet. <laughs> right here. So, uh, yes, this was a real problem into the medieval times, into those beautiful cities. The problem of the, of the hygiene. That's why the... Even the medicine, it wasn't very, very advanced. Uh, in Transylvania, we have, uh, in Romania, we have the first pharmacies uh, documentary attested starting with the 16th century, so around 1500. But uh, the medicine was tried to copy uh, pretty much the more advanced medicine from the west of Europe because uh, we, the Romanians, uh, used to stay all the time with our eyes uh, to west because uh, we consider the West our uh, Latin brothers, like Italy, French, Spain. Uh, and of course, uh, we look to the Western civilization uh, all the time. Even that we were surrounded by the Slavs, Russians, Serbian, Bulgarian, um, Hungarians, which are not Slavs, but Finno Ugrics. And uh, because of this, we all the time said that we are a island of Latinity into a sea of Slavs. So uh, we ended the tour. <laughs> we ended the tour inside of the defense corridor. You see? It was so quick. But uh, from here, you can see also inside of the courtyard of the fortress, that's the gate, which I used to enter inside of it. Here they were covered with fire uh, and with arrows very very well everything and uh, now i will ask you to join me till the exit because we still have time in here because i want to go around of the church through the courtyard to see everything till the end because we still have time and uh, also one of the ways they used to punish the people in here it was to expose them uh, at the entrance of the church during the Sunday, uh, because Sunday was the main uh, um, religion service, religious service. And uh, I'm glad, Rhonda, it was very informative. That's the purpose, my purpose. Thank you. And um, here they uh, they used to expose the people which do bad things, uh, mostly um, mostly tying them to a. Um, tie them to a, to a big stone to not give them the opportunity to run. And uh, all the others which was going to the church or coming out from the church used to uh, say bad things to them and uh, teach them to not repeat the mistakes. Uh, during of a tour, uh, the guy from here said that uh, uh, here on that stone were uh, tied up mostly the adulterous adulterous woman and uh, <laughs> the question uh, why only the adulterous woman the answer of the guide was well because uh, if we tied up to the stone to expose all the adultery people from the village we doesn't have enough stones <laughs> referring probably to the men from the from the community so from here i will repeat the <laughs> i will repeat the the tour the, the, the 360 degrees tour from inside. This time I will do it from the outside. And here I will show you a little bit the church, which is a classic Gothic church with, uh, with a transept. Now, this, uh, this arrow tower, like the one from Notre Dame de Paris, built exactly on the, on the middle of the church. You, you, <laughs> yes, yes, Karen, uh, I will show you all the history of Romania, because it's uh, it's simply surprising, as I used to say, this country. And there are many, many, many beautiful things in here. So if you will follow me, I will show you everything, because there are many more to show. 
Uh, here you can see this window was uh, built on the place of another one. You can see the modification because they were added another window. And uh, here they had pretty much place to keep the cattle and to live. You can see here are three floors. On each floor, a line of, uh, of rooms. That's why I said it's like a, it's like a hive, this uh, fortified church. Yeah, the simplicity of it, yes, it's beautiful. Santa Simplicitas, how are saying the Latins, no? Saying simplicity. The Church of the Teutonic Knights from the other side. Those four leaves windows are a mark, a trademark of the Cistercian monks, here in Transylvania at least. You will see it at many, many churches. Of course, now it's full of vegetation. I bet that 500 years ago, this vegetation wasn't so much here. Uh, you know that the majority of the cathedrals, maybe excepting the one from uh, Paris, not Notre Dame, doesn't have a transept like this one. You can see inside is this cross shape, which I call it transept, which have uh, exactly above of the intersection of the holes uh, that uh, that tower, but the majority of the churches, the cathedrals from Europe, are made like a nave church. It's called nave church because it's a long nave, a long hall, where all the people are stay together to join to the religious service. And uh, as far as I read, uh, this was an idea of the Dominicans, which uh, said that it's better for all the people of the community to stay uh, into the same space, to listen, all of them uh, in the same time uh, to the priest. And what the priest is saying, here you can see the nave is not a very long one. The nave is the part of the church which starting from the tower and goes to your right side. So in many cases, this nave, it's longer and the church doesn't have the lateral sides, as you can see it here, you see? It's a lateral nave, it's a lateral side, which on the other side have another one, which together give a cross shape to the church. Actually, uh, we used to say uh, into the Eastern Orthodox Church that uh, the church, it should be like a, like a nave, no? Like a nave, like a boat, which, uh, floating on the, on the sea of life, actually, with us uh, on it. Here you can see the staircase, which was letting the people to going up. And here it's the, the door from the eastern side and the beautiful Gothic window with uh, Gothic decorations. are some uh, small Gothic adids in, uh, in these lateral decorations. In many cases, in some cases, as I will show you to you Tuesday, at the San Bartolomeo Church, there it's a combination between Gothic and Romanic, because that church was built into the Romanic style, and then they were added uh, another part, or rebuilt another part into the Gothic style. This is the tower of the church, from this side, and now we'll uh, we'll get together outside to the end of the tour, and then if you have time, I will invite you to join me in about 45 minutes to my city, to my town, to Gimbav, where it's a medieval festival, and inside of the fortified church that we have it there, because the Germans built in all their villages from Transylvania fortified church, and uh, they were they they had <coughs> hundreds. Of this so inside of the fortified church we have a medieval festival this weekend and at 5 30 uh, the organizers announced um, 
a beautiful uh, fight demonstration of the night with the sword uh, for the children. I hope that they will respect the hour 5.30. Thank you, Marta. And uh, I will ask you to join me. And tonight, around uh, 9 p.m., uh, the Romanian time, uh, there will be a, a concert of uh, folkloric Romanian music in this, uh, um, in this festival. And I will try to, uh, to broadcast, <laughs> to do a live from that, um, from that uh, concert of Romanian folklorical music. I hope to, to have a good sound for you. And uh, I'm sure that you will enjoy it because it's uh, something uh, really beautiful and uh, it's a good orchestra that you will see it. Okay, and now we'll, uh, I will leave from here and I will be hurry uh, to go to Gimbav. You know how it says in Latin, uh, festina lente, which it means uh, hurry up slowly and uh, take care of you. And uh, thank you, Angela. And uh, I will wish you a good morning if you are in the United States, a good afternoon to evening if you are in Europe, and a good night if you are uh, in Australia and in this part of Europe or of, uh, of the planet. See you soon, all of you, and uh, God bless you and I wish you health. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dean. I will keep it in my mind, your advices. Bye.